Stars and Stripes Forever, of course, is a widely known march by John Philip Sousa. And by an act of Congress, it is the official national march of the United States. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Sousa composed the march on Christmas Day, back in 1896. He was on an ocean liner on his way home from vacation with his wife in Europe. He composed the march in his head and then committed the notes to paper on his arrival here in the U.S. Now, we would like to invite Al Bodenlos, who's a bugler at the time of the Pearl Harbor attack and one of our Pearl Harbor survivors, to please come to the podium to direct the band in Sousa's stirring march, The Stars and Stripes Forever. So let's hear it for Al. I've been, I've been blessed and honored to tell you a little funny story about myself that I already had told the band earlier. When I was in junior high, I was thrown by the band room and a trumpet player was playing and practicing a solo. And I thought, gee, I'd like to play the trumpet. So when I got home, I asked my dad if he could buy me a trumpet. Well, it was really depressing here. But anyway, in three weeks, he come home with this charming, sweet up old trumpet. Well, without money for a teacher, I had to teach myself. And as many of you know, that when you're real excited about whatever it is, you excel. And if you forgive me, I did excel. I joined the high school band and uh, uh, in my senior year, and I studied uh, the, uh, the different instruments, the French horn, the baritone, percussion. I wanted to be a music teacher. And above all, a band director. And when I graduated, I wanted to go to college, but the depression here is my parents had a little money and I had none. So I decided to join the Army. I was sent to Fort Ord, California. When they checked my record, they said, Oh, you're a trumpet player. You are going to be the battalion's master bugler and a teacher of three other biblers, which I did. Uh, I taught them to play all the daily calls, starting with Reveille at 6.30, Chow Paul and so on. <laughs> well, even though I was the teacher, I had to take my turn every four days as the daily builder. Well, the night, the day before I was to be the daily builder, they tied a towel around the end of my bunk, and the duty chart sergeant would wake me up in time to play Reveille at 6.30. <clears throat> now, during the night, I was awakened by noise in the background, the first sergeant's store was open at crack, and they were discussing picking up brand new trucks for the battalion. I thought, my God, is it Reveille already? I tried to see my watch, but it was so dark, it's still in the room, I could barely see it. However, I visualized the hour hand at 25 after. I said, oh my God, they forgot to wake me. I jumped out of bed, put my uniform on, grabbed my bugle, ran down to the playing field, I put it in a megaphone and I played Reveille. It was beautiful. I was so proud. All the lights went on all over Florida. <laughs> the next thing here comes the first sergeant out the back door in his long underwear. <laughs> to this day, I swear they were red. <laughs> Hollering four little words at me. And if you'll forgive me, God damn it, Private, what the hell are you doing? It's 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> I had 128 pounds after I stopped shaking. He ordered me to turn all those lights out and then go back the next morning to apologize to all the first sergeants, which I did. <laughs> well, it wasn't long after that I was transferred to Hawaii. <laughs> They checked my record and saw that I was a master builder. I guess the first sergeant of Fort Ord had sent a kind of nice letter explaining my expertise as a teacher and a builder, <coughs> builder master. At the bottom of the letter, though, he had P.S. The only thing is, he doesn't know how to tell time. <laughs>